Hey guys, in our last few lessons we were looking at physical properties based on intermolecular forces and now we'll be look, uh, focusing on water as a solvent. So how is water and its intermolecular forces with other substances allow it to become, uh, to be able to dissolve other things or mix with other things. In this section we'll be looking at the process of dissolution. So dissolution is the ability for one substance to be dissolved in another. Uh, but first we'll just quickly define some things. So a solution is a homogeneous mixture of two or more substances. In the picture here we have sugar. So sugar here is just represented by the yellow dots and it's all the same because it's, they're all sugar molecules. And the same with water with the white dots. But when we add them together we form a homogeneous mixture because they separate and form a uniform mixture all the way through. All the sugar molecules are equally distant with, uh, and separated in the water solution. A solvent is the major component in a solution and it's the dissolving substance. So really it's just uh, a liquid that it, something can be dissolved in and usually we're looking at water. A solid is a substance being dissolved, so it's like the sugar. Uh, the formation of solutions is related to the forces of attraction between the solvent and the solute particles. So we're looking at water molecules and how they interact with the sugar molecules. Or in this case, we're looking at how water molecules are interacting with sodium ions and chlorine ions. During the formation of a solution, there's a, new, a rearrangement of particles. And a solute will dissolve a solvent only if the intermolecular forces within the solute and those of the solvent are similar. A solvent, so polar solvents tend to dissolve polar solutes. Like a polar, uh, polar water will dissolve something that's polar in, in their molecular uh, charge. So non-polar sol solvents tend to dissolve non-polar solutes. If we look at this table, it shows us that uh, polar and polar will be, uh, be able to mix, so they're soluble. This is the, an example is sugar. Sugar is a polar molecule and it will dissolve in water, another polar molecule. But if we have oil, which is a non-polar molecule, and we dissolve it in water, which is a polar molecule, they don't mix, so they're insoluble. But if we have oil, non-polar, and kerosene, non-polar, they tend to mix and it'll be soluble. And finally, if we have sugar, the polar molecule, and dissolve it in kerosene, usually it doesn't dissolve because it's a non-polar solvent. Polar solvents tend to dissolve much more readily in polar solvents. A solute, sorry. Polar solutes tend to dissolve in polar solvents and non, uh, rather than non-polar ones. And this is because the intermolecular forces between the solvent, so within, say, water and water, are similar to that of the ones in the solute, so between the sugar and sugar. So ethanol and sugar are very soluble in water. That means they can, when we put it in the water, it will mix together and dissolve completely and mix very easily. Both these substances are polar and form hydrogen bonds with water molecules. And the molecules will tend to be orientated in such a way to maximize interactions. So that means we're going to have maximum interaction between water and the sol uh, solute. However, non-polar substances, uh, if we add oil into water, it doesn't mix. So, and we can see that in the picture over there. Uh, so oil doesn't, and other non-polar substances don't really mix in water. It's because intermolecular interactions don't occur, uh, are not really suitable and don't really facilitate uh, mixing between the solute and the solvent molecules. Uh, the oil in, and in the oil, intermolecular forces are mainly dispersion forces. Remember, because it's a non-polar one, and water have hydrogen bonding because it's a polar molecule with the right right criteria to fit hydrogen bonding. So hydrogen bonds between the water molecules are quite strong, remember? And they're stronger than dispersion forces that are present in the oil. So we have that water molecules tend to stick together because they're quite strong, the uh, intermolecular forces, and they don't really allow for you to interact with the oil, which only has dispersion forces, which are quite weak. So that means the water molecules don't separate enough and they stick together too much and therefore we get clumps of oil sticking together because the water can't accommodate them. 
But oil will dissolve in a non-polar solvent, such as kerosene, because there's suitable interactions here. Intermolecular forces between the kerosene and the oil are, are dispersion forces because they're both nonpolar. And because they're both nonpolar and they're both similar in size, uh, the, inter, uh, the force between them, the intermolecular forces will allow it for the kerosene to separate and allow the oil to come in and bind and interact with the kerosene. Dispersion forces are formed between the oil and the kerosene, and this means that it will mix together really evenly. Solutions in which the solute are dissolved in water are called aqueous solutions. And this is indicated by the symbol AQ, but in italics. And we write this to the right of the solute to let us know that it's an aqueous solution, or mean it's dissolved in water. An example is we have glucose, which is written as C6H12O6. And if we dissolve it in water, we put a little AQ here in italics in brackets to let us know it's in water and not in a crystal structure. And similarly with sodium chloride or salt, NaCl is the, the chemical formula. And because we're dissolving it in water and it's not a solid, we're going to write a little AQ here in italics. So just to sum up quickly, we're looking at aqueous solutions, how uh, like dissolves like. So if we have polar and polar, they're most likely to dissolve, uh, mix together and dissolve. If we have polar and polar, uh, sorry, non-polar and non-polar is going to happen again. But if we mix the two, so polar and a non-polar, it's not really going to work very well. And we have insoluble um, or immiscible uh, products. And when we put things in water, we have aqueous solutions. So we have a little term that we put an AQ there. So with that, we can answer a few questions. So question one, define a polar bond. It's a covalent bond with a, a shared electrons between two atoms and these are not shared equally. So one of them has a greater pull, it has a greater affinity for elect uh, the electrons, so it's going to be slightly more negative on one side compared to the other side. So define a polar molecule though. A molecule with an overall unbalanced charge distribution. It either has one or more polar bonds, and these don't balance or cancel out each other out, so the whole molecule overall is going to have a slight charge distribution, an unbalanced one. So question two, identify the forces between polar molecules. Polar molecules, remember, have a dipole, and therefore we're going to have dipole-dipole forces, as well as dis some dispersion forces between polar molecules. Hydrogen bonds can occur if the hydrogen and uh, is bound to an oxygen, nitrogen, or fluorine atom. Question three, would you expect methanol to dissolve in water, and explain why? So here we need to say what we'd expect and make sure we also explain it. So water is a polar solvent and methanol is a polar molecule. So if like dissolves like, we would expect it to mix together. And therefore methanol should dissolve in the water. Hydrogen bonds between the water molecules break and space out and allow for more hydrogen bonds to form between water and the methanol, which is why it can mix. Question four, what forces are formed when oil is dissolved in kerosene? First of all, we know oil is a nonpolar molecule and therefore it's mainly going to have dispersion forces and the same case is with kerosene. So dispersion forces are forming between the oil and the kerosene molecules when it mixes. Question five, would you expect some substances to be soluble in both water and carbon tetrachloride and explain? So water is a polar solvent and carbon tetrachloride is a non-polar solvent. And we will expect that some substances to be soluble in both water and carbon tetrachloride. So solubility is a matter of relative strengths of forces between the solute, so what we're dissolving, and the solvent, so like water or the tetra, uh, carbon tetrachloride. So like dissolved like is only a rule of some, so it doesn't happen all the time. So usually, um, it's a general trend that we see, and each individual solvent and solute is unique combination of these forces. So sometimes we can have something that may have enough for both, and it can dissolve in both. But sometimes it doesn't, and that's when we can use the, the rule like dissolves like. So just to summarize what we did today, is that we were looking at the intermolecular forces between uh, different molecules, and this will allow whether 
they would dissolve in each other or mix. And really what we look at is whether it's a polar molecule or not polar molecule. Polar molecules would dissolve in polar solvents and non-polar molecules will dissolve in non-polar solvents, which is why we get the, the rule like dissolves like. But sometimes there are cases where this doesn't always occur. Thank you.